In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create an outer and an inner label on a donut chart. And what we're going to do here more specifically is to make sure that these items are connected with the data set, with the data set label, plus we want to make sure that it will not interfere with, for example, if you have a chart title or if you would have a legend. So we want to make sure that this will be exactly nicely between there without any interference from the others. So let's look how to add inner and outer labels in the donut chart in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need to do here is, of course, to get our default code, which you can find in Chart.js3.com getting started, or this specific link here, make, uh, which is also in the description box. So then, if I scroll down here, copy this entire chunk of code. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So I'm going to paste this code in here, and then I will cut out this and put it in there, save and refresh. So now we have a bar chart. I'm going to convert this quickly into a donut chart. So I'm going to scroll down here. And then what we're going to do here is I'm going to say here, donut. And then I'm going to remove the scales because it doesn't have any scales. And then next what I will do is I want to adjust the size of it because it will be a square. So I'm going to make 500 pixels. If I save this, refresh, there we are. So we have a nice square that's will fit on the screen. So now what I want to do is I want to add up another data set. So we have a, a one for the inner and another one for the outer. So I'm going to copy all of this, put it here in the next data set. And then let's say here, this will be our inner. Yeah, well, let's say inner, I uh, profits, doesn't matter. I'm just saying making up. Then here, outer weekly sales. And just for the sake of it, I want to make them slightly different. I'll say here 9, say here 6, and here I will make this 12. And then what I will do as well is I want to give it different colors here. So I'm going to make this or the shade slightly darker. So I say 0 0.4 so we can see the differences of this. Border width, we can maintain that, but what I do want here is a comma, and then I'm going to say here, cut out percentage. Oh, sorry, this should be like this. You can say 80%. So like this here, if you don't don't put percentage in here, that's the Chart.js 2 version. So save that, if I refresh here, all right, so we have one, and then the other one needs to have as well a cutout percentage here. Save that. There we are. So now we have these two, and you can see here, this is the outer one, which is a lighter shade compared to the inner line, inner ring. So now we have this, and what I'm going to do is because having text in here and here up, is, or at least here up, that's the most tricky part. So we're going to use some advanced items in here. And you might say, well, we can just use the title. Well, what if you already use the title? So I'm going to show you the way how you're supposed to do it as a professional. So in here, I'm going to put in, because we can imagine we would have a title in here. So I'm going to say plugin, and I'm going to add up here title. So I'm going to say here title, and I'm going to put in here display, then we say display is true, and then we're going to say the text, what it will be, and say here, inner, outer labels with chartjs3.com or something like that, whatever you want. Um, this is just for demo. So you can see here what is happening now. We have this here, and what I want to do is I want to have space between these two here, and that requires some advanced items that we're going to do right now. And of course, if you don't want any of this legend, because I can imagine you don't want this, in that case, you can hide it, but you still might need to use this trick unless you don't have the title here. And then you could do what we call the layout. So I'm going to show you that one as well, if I say here layout, but this is not possible if you have a title and the legend as well. So if I say layout, I'm going to say a padding, and we're going to say padding top 20 pixels. Save, refresh. So you can see here, there's a padding top here. Basically, we could use this if we don't have this title and the legend. But if we do have it, we want to have, of course, the inner layer or the outer layer between here. So this will not work. So this is not an option for us. So I'm going to remove that one. So then what I'm going to do here now is just show you the way we can do it. So after the options, we're going to create plugins. I'm going to add up here a plugin, and I'll call this the legend margin. Because Chart.js doesn't allow us to put in here space between. Only if you would put in the padding, there's a padding option for the legend, but it will only put in between these elements here or at the very top, but not at the bottom here. So I'm going to create a separate 
item for this. So we're going to have a plugin. And this plugin is called Legend Margin Plugin Block. Or that's the block. And then we're going to say a constant. This equals that. Alright, so legend margin. And then we say ID here, although I won't be using this. So I just leave it in there. And then what I want to do here is starting to look. We have here the uh, drawing time. And the drawing time will be before initialization. So before init. That's the function. What this truly means is that before it calculates everything, or before it starts to draw, initialize. And initialize means starting. Before it starts to draw, it still has to recalculate something. In this case, I want to recalculate that it understands that this legend here will be some need to have some space here below or some pixels that we will define right now. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say a chart, that's the objects, arcs, and login options. Although we won't be using the these two here, we'll only be using this. And I'm going to say a constant. I'm going to say a fit value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a fit functionality here. And this one is basically in here, which is in the chart dot legend dot fit. So this is basically the object going there, or the namespace going there. And fit is a functionality or a function. So what will happen here? It will fit, and we will bind it. Binding basically would mean we will get whatever the value was from this. We add it up with any new value that we're going to define right now. So what we're going to do here then is the following. We're going to copy this. So we put it in there, and you might say, why are we not using this here? Well, because we need to bind it, we need to get the original first, and then we're going to use this afterwards. If you don't do it, if you use this immediately you, on here, then you'll get an error. Why? I don't know. I guess it's uh, uh, because of the binding or something like that. Anyway, what I'm going to say here, function, fit, and then in here, we're going to put in the value. We're going to say here, fit value dot bind so we're going to bind this value which is the function and then here we're going to say bind it with what exactly well this chart dot legend and then we have this and then here again parentheses so make sure you do it like this or else you will uh, get an error or it doesn't work correctly so then what i want to do i want to return the value so i want to return the value with the binding item so then we say this dot height so we're going to grab here the specific location of the bind with the chart legend then we get the height of that and then what i will say here is plus equal so whatever the height value is that we get here we say plus equal let's say 30 pixels so what will happen then is it's semicolon here and semicolon there save this what will happen now is pay attention here. if i refresh we have now 30 pixels of margin here or padding at, at the bottom so this is wonderful. So it starts to work here now. So now what I want to do is start to work with the next part. And the next part is basically drawing the item. So I'm going to create a new plugin for that. And this plugin I will call our inner outer labels. Let's copy this. And you can see here how to put in two plugins. It's just like an array. But then these are the objects itself. So then here put in here this and uh, then we can say inner outer label uh, plugin block and then we're going to say your constant inner outer label equals and then we're going to say here id equals this and then what i want to do is for the inner and outer label i will just take the legend for the label here so i'm going to grab this label and that will be it and you could do maybe something else if you want to have a customized item that can be done as well so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here when do I want to draw this? Well, basically the functionality will be I will draw it after these lines have or this data set has been drawn. So once the data set has been drawn, then I want to have this inner and outer label text being shown here. So I'm going to say here after data sets is an S draw. So once the data set has been drawn, then we do our work or our part. And then here again, chart, arcs, and plugin options. These are, of course, the objects. Then here, what we're going to do is constant. And then here, what we're going to talk about is uh, object destructuring. And object destructuring is basically uh, uh, we're getting this object here, and that's the one I'm going to use, and then break it down to, sh to use shorthands. If you want to understand this, I have a video about understanding. Uh, uh, what is that? The uh, object destructuring in Chart.js. I'm going to recommend you to watch that video if you want to understand this. 
So then what I'm going to do here is this is of course the object is this one and then I'm going to say here CTX comma and then we're going to grab here the data I'll be needing that later on and chart area and in the chart area I'm going to use all these items here top bottom left right width and height and if you want to understand the chart area I have another video as well on which is called understanding the chart area in chart.js very useful as well because that will allow you to position everything in a canvas so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to draw some text and the drawing of the text will be well let's position uh, well we have two items we're going to make so let's draw first the text itself so I'm going to say a ctx dot save to save all variables above and I'm going to say a ctx dot and then what I'm going to do here is ctx dot font and I'm going to define the font family and the style. So I'm going to say bolder. So that will be font uh, uh, font style or font type. That's bolder. And then we're going to say here maybe 15 pixels. That's all right. And then what I want to do here is the font family sans serif. And of course, you can define it anything you want. And if you don't want bolder, you can just remove this. That's fine. That's no problem at all. So once we did this, the next thing is ctx dot fill style. Basically, it's the color. And the color in this case, I can just grab, uh, we can grab any of these colors here, but I think it would be nice just to get the official color from Chart.js, which is hashtag triple six. This is the default gray color that is being used everywhere in the scales and title and etc. etc. So once we have this, the next one will be ctx.fill text. And here we have to use parentheses. And basically here you're going to start using the text what I want so let's say this will be our uh, inner inner label I just say, say here inner label this is how you can modify this comma and I'm going to put in here x and y value so because I'm because we didn't use here any x and y in any of these constants or object object destructuring so I can use x and y here however this x and y is basically the pixel coordinates on a vertical or horizontal level for the x and vertical on the y so what I'm going to do now is just simple, is just put it here somewhere. The, st the starting point is 0, 0.0, that's in the corner here. So let's say here, we're going to say we want to move 10 pixels to the right, and I want to move 20 pixels down. So we save this, refresh, there you are. So we get the inner label here. We have to put this in here. So let's start to work on how to do this. So how can we play around with this? Well, basically this here, that's why we have this chart area positioning. We can start to work on it. So if I want to go to here, to the center, we have to know what is basically the width. So in our case, luckily the width is quite straightforward because in a pie chart, the width is starting from the left side to the right side. So basically I can just grab here the width, but if I put the width here and just save this, you will see it's gone now. Why? It is moving on the outer side. So I want to put it here. So I need to divide the width by two. So it's divided by two, save. There we are. Now it is in the center, but you might say, well, not really. And this is, the reason for this is because it's text align left, meaning that it will start at the right side after this point. This left will be ignored and the right side starts. So what I need to do here, text align center. So ctx dot text align equals center, save, refresh. All right, so now we are in the center, but now I want to push this down. I want to push it down here in the middle for now, and later on we're going to put it here up. So how do we do this? Well, we have this this part here is basically what we call the top. So if I do this, let me show you. Let's say here, the top. We are here and it's somewhere there, all right? But I wanna go here in the center. So you might say, all right, why don't we just use the height? Well, it doesn't work like that. If I do height right now, if I save this, refresh, it goes already down here. And the reason why you might say, well, shouldn't it, because this height would be the full item, Shouldn't it be going down over the bottom? The answer is no. Why? Because it looks at this part here as the chart area and the height. So if I do height divided by two, we will get somewhere, but this is not really desirable. Let's put it in the center. So we have the height by two is, we are basically in the center, but we have here the top part. This top part is this part here. We need to add up. So add plus top, save, refresh. Now we're in the, in the perfect center. All right, so now we have this. The next thing what I want to do is I want to start putting in the uh, outer label. But before I'm doing that, 
I guess this here should be converted into the inner label here. It's this one here. So how do we do this? Well, remember we had the data uh, destructuring or object destructuring of data. So I'm going to grab this data here. I'm going to see a dot. And then I'm going to say here, let's look at it, because basically this data refers us to here. Then we can go to data sets, where we can say index 0 or 1, and then we can get the label. So I'm going to say here, where are we? Data sets, let's say number 1, because that's the inner label, and then dot uh, label, if I'm not mistaken. Was it label or labels? Label. Without the S, this is, watch out here, we have the one with the S. So if I save this, refresh, look at this inner weekly profits, which is correct, because that is the text that we assigned here. And if I even do, do profits and then uh, ABC, you will see it will work nicely. There we are. So this is already confirmed. So the next thing is, how do we put the other one? Well, basically, that will become easier. We have this, but of course, I want to use a bit more professional method. I'm going to make a function out of this. So I'm going to create a function here. So we don't have to copy and paste this code. So I'm going to say function, and let's say function uh, uh, labels. That's, that would be fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out this part and move it in here. Give this a proper indentation. Delete this additional space here, or what is this? Can be removed, all right, and this one as well. So then what I want to do here is we have this, we have all these values here, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to say here now, copy this, go in here the labels, this is basically the function that we're going to activate, and then what I want to do here is we have here the text, comma, um, this would be the x and y value. And we are allowed to use this because we don't use any uh, things anywhere else. And in text here, maybe we could say here the data set index is probably the right term because we don't want to really change this part, only this in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here number one, comma, and I'm going to grab this here. Let's say this, there will be the x, then comma, and this will be the, the height part or the y value. So put that in there. Say here, y, here we're going to say x, and then here, all I will do is data set index. So we're going to copy this, put it in there. Because the number is that we're going to play with around this. So if I save this, and then oh, save, refresh. So nothing changes visually, uh, visually, but behind the scenes, we have done a lot of extra work. Or at least we've done a lot of adjustment. So now what I can do here is just copy this. Let's do another one. And then I'll say here, this will be zero. And for now, I'll just say this will be 10 and this will be 20 save there we are all right so now we have this what i want to do is i want to push this here to the center first which is basically you can say here width divide by two save there we are so now we're there but now what i want to do is i want to go down here how do we do this well what we can do is we can just get from the top the moment i do top i will go on on this part here, and then all I have to do is deduct amount of pixels to go up. Remember, in the canvas, when we go up, you have to deduct because this is the zero, and the lower we go, we're going to the height of the item. And if I'm not mistaken, this is 500 pixels in height because we have uh, set the uh, square of 500. So uh, if you're wondering what I mean, it was this one here with 500, and if it's a square, 500 height and width, that's the square. So what I'm going to do here is just minus. Maybe 20 pixels, that'll be fine. Let's see. There we are. So that works nicely. So then what I want to do is, so imagine if we're going to remove this item here. What happens if we're going to remove our uh, item? So I'm going to say comma here, I'm going to say here, legend. Display equals false. Save. Refresh, and there you are. You can see it will not interfere even with our title. Here, it will be always here. So you might say, well, I want to go this up here. How can I do this? How can I push it up? Well, we can do a negative number. Let's look at this. Uh, what we have here, the height divided by 4, we could say here maybe, or sorry, not a, not a negative number. We can do here maybe plus 100 if I say it like this. That's fine. Or I guess what we can do as well is you can say height divided by 4. If I do this, say almost similar. So you can play around with that in pixels, how much, how many pixels you want to uh, do that. So that, that doesn't matter so much. The only thing I would recommend you to consider is this. Here, outer label and inner label, we only are able to do two labels. If you do another ring here, 
you can put in, but uh, you have to consider, but the third label or the, the center label will be hard to pinpoint or is not able to pinpoint. So that is basically how you can put in here a inner and an outer label in chart, in a pie chart or donut chart. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you will save it the legend, so I'm going to put in the legend back and uh, then I'm going to show you. Let's say this true, there we are. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you say, well, hold on, what about the legend? I want to have space here up as well. We can play around with this far more. And I have a whole video that shows you basically both ways. So what I've showed right now was only one part of it, but there's another one here is on how to add margin in the legend top and bottom. That's another one that I can recommend you to explore as well.